of a big coal mine here. Today I'm back with another video. Today I'll be showing you how to start a successful survival world. Here, so here are a few tips on what to do. First, let's go into the settings to create a world. If it's survival world, you obviously want it in survival, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go in creative so we can make this a little quick. So I can show it to you. Now you want to name your world so it doesn't get lost in your world. Now you head into advanced. You can change, you can choose a seed template or find a, or look for a seed you found on YouTube. I'm just going to go with this random seed right here. You can start with the map. Usually I don't. If you're getting, if you're, don't, if you're really new to Minecraft, I would recommend a bonus chest. Turn show coordinates on for sure so you can know where you are. And then I would not really mess with any of this stuff. You can, of course, add any packs that you have that you may want into it resource packs behavior packs will change the way that your game works so i wouldn't recommend that and then you can choose if you so i would not be I'll, easy normal and hard pretty much the same peaceful there really isn't much of a challenge to it so i'll just keep mine on normal and let's create our world Once you're in your world, you want to look at your surroundings and see what's around. I have two big mountains here, and this looks like to be a very lucky seed, as we have a village right there with an outpost there and a ruined portal. Another village there. This is a really, really good seed to start out on. If you start where I am, I would recommend taking hay bales from the villages looting all the village chests and then once it's night I would recommend trapping the villagers into their houses and especially looting the blacksmith there seems to be two in this village as you see they can get you started off really really well and of course you would not and this early on you get some that I would not recommend going in there till later but I am going to you'd also want to loot this and the other village but this is of course is a very very lucky start so we're gonna assume we're not gonna start here if you did though you would probably want to claim a villager a, a decent sized villager house to yourself for example, this would be a good starter house, as you have enough room to grow in, a chest, that would be a good starter house, but chances aren't 100% that you're going to get a village, a ruined portal, another village, and a outpost there, so we're going to pretend we didn't find this. You obviously, the, you obviously want to start punching down some trees. You can get yourself some wood. You probably want to punch down a few trees nearby. And then you most likely will get quite a decent amount of wood. Let's just assume you got about this much wood. Then you would want to turn all of it into planks, unless you plan on making a house really soon. Make a crafting table, pop it down, make a healthy amount of sticks, just like this. That should be enough. And now make your tools, so pickaxe, 
Yeah. Pretty much you need a lot of tools. So you want to make a pickaxe, a shovel, probably a hoe for farming, an axe for chopping down trees quicker, and of course, a sword. Though, I would recommend holding off on making most of these. I would only make, I usually make the wood, the, mm. only the wooden pickaxe. I go to a cave nearby to mine myself cobblestone. So you have, and get a healthy amount of cobblestone. I would recommend taking at least 16 and then craft up all of these tools so you can have some good tools as you're going to get as you're going to outgrow these tools pretty quickly i guarantee you after you do that i would recommend trying to find a small cave or a, a, a small cave or big tree such as this. Once you find a small cave, you can set up houses in it. I'll demonstrate that. But if you find a big tree first, I would recommend crafting some ladders, mining into this tree, and making this your new home as good and secure. You can expand it up and have a nice home free of many mobs. Unlike a cave where it will constantly spawning mobs on. But if you don't happen to find, but if you want to build your base not in a tree, you could of course go into a cave, grab yourself some coal, and then after you have some coal, Craft yourself some torches. This isn't the biggest cave. It's not ideal. But we're going to pretend this is bigger. Light up areas of your known cave. Place some craft a crafting bench down. And mine some more blocks. Next, what you need to do is you need to make a furnace. Just like this. At this point, the sun will probably be setting. I am speeding quickly through it, so it won't be setting for me. But I would recommend looking for some mobs such as chickens and pigs. To hunt. And... And you would also, and if it's getting dark, you would also really want to get, hunt down some sheep. You can make a bed. So after you have hunted for a bit, you should probably cook up your food. I like cooking the least amount of cook the chicken, then you'd cook hook the mutton and then the pork chops. You don't have to do that, but how I just have it. You need three wool for a bed. And you craft a bed just like this. And then when it's night you can skip the night as mobs as on higher difficulty. Mobs can be really powerful. Next, what I'd, after your crew food is all cooked up, I would recommend starting to mine down into the depths. Of course, you probably don't want to do it in a mountain if that's where your house is. Like this one, you would probably want to adventure around to try and find a decent cave. 
that is not underwater. That will be very hard to explore early on. I don't seem to have many good caves around here. Oh, there's one. This would be a really good cave to start at. As it heads down, it looks like pretty far. It won't be, it will be a little difficult to explore these types of caves as they're very narrow. Keep going down, and you need a stone pickaxe to mine iron, and that will get you some raw iron. So you want to continue exploring the cave. If you find dripstone, you will probably want to take that dripstone as it will be useful later. My cave seems to end here. So then you would mine down some more and continue mining down as far as you can and remember to mine in the staircase like this. Do not, as you expose more blocks, you also do not want to break the one rule in Minecraft. Don't dig straight down. It is very, very dangerous. Sometimes it may work out for you. But other times, you may just die. And sometimes, it looks as this will happen to me. You don't find anything at all. So it is very important to not mine straight down as you can. Run into lava, fall from a high place. Get your tr stuff trapped in a cave. So remember to mine in a staircase, otherwise, you may get in trouble. Once you get down to a certain depth in deep slate, uh, around obviously one negative 50, after you've, of course, gone home, or just stay in the mines. Smelted yourself some iron from some of your wood or coal you found. To get an iron pickaxe, you would want to mine down to try and find yourself. Okay? Or if you cannot find yourself a cave, dig all the way down to negative 50, find yourself some diamonds, and remember, pick up every single ore you can. All ores are important. Once you're down to negative, around 55, 56, start drip mining. Try to find diamonds, as these will be very, very useful later on. You want to find at least five. Oh, I found diamonds. Totally, I didn't hand place them. Ignore that, that, that doesn't exist. So you're gonna mine it up and keep mining until you have five. After you have five, it's time to head out of the caves. When you're home, it will probably be night, in which case you would want to take a little nap in your bed. Then you would take those diamonds you found. Five diamonds. And craft yourself. Craft yourself. And think. First, I would recommend crafting a diamond pickaxe. And then... Head down to the lava and get yourself five obsidian. I'm just gonna grab it out of my inventory, pending that I went down to mind it. I've gone down and mined five obsidian. Mined more than five obsidian. Then you also need to go and find yourself some sugar cane.
you're gonna look around water and you'll find sugar cane. You will need three sugar cane. You'll also want to find some cows. So you can get at least one piece of leather for now. Then you will head back into your base, your base, and you will use that th those three sugar cane to craft some a bird just like that. Then you'll put them in this formation, just like this, to grab a book. Book here, two diamonds here, and obsidian for your enchantment here. Now comes the grinding part. You want to go mine sugarcane, plant it, mine, plant it, mine, and harvest a bunch of sugarcane and a bunch of leather, and end up crafting. Fifteen bookshelves. Fifteen bookshelves. Then you want to place them around your enchantment table. So it will level up your enchantment table. And you'll know it's out. You have enough when... It says level 30 here. Then you want to go down to the mines and get yourself some of lapis. You want to get yourself quite a bit of lapis, and then you need to hunt some mobs or make a mob bomb, which I may be making a tutorial on eventually, and enchant your tool. You also want something else besides a grindstone. You will want to get fortune three on your diamond pick. So you enchant it. I'm breaking through, but it may have a chance of other things. You got efficiency four. That is really good. You could put a book in here and get more enchantments on it. But you can just keep enchanting until you get the enchantment you want. In this case, fortune three. Which I'm getting very unlucky with. It may take a little bit, but you should be able to get it eventually. See, there you go. That is the max roll you can get on a diamond pickaxe from an enchantment table. Breaking three, fortune three, and efficiency four. You can't get anything else better from an enchanting table on a diamond pickaxe. Now that you have that, you want to head back into the mines and find yourself some more diamonds. So now that you have fortune three, you'll be able to get even more diamonds from them. So after you went to the mines and got yourself quite a bit of diamonds, you want to make your new sophisticated tools. You want for sure the chest plate. Boots. The leggings. And the helmet. And then put all your fancy gear on. Apparently I've lost my pants. The 
but you probably will want to enchant this gear to make it better. Fire protection is not that good. It can be useful, but what you really are looking for is protection four. Of course, protection three is really good as well. But, you, but protection four is the max level of protection. The ones can be useful. But if you're dealing with mobs that you want to transport that are hostile, and they attack you, they may take damage and eventually die, which is less than ideal. The boots, you do want, you do really want feather falling on those. And as you can see, I got protection for, you don't have to have everything with protection for. For example, it could be good to have fire protection or projectile protection armor. Then you'll of course want to do Similar thing with your diamond sword, getting darkness four on it. This is a a, a diamond sword. Or just kidding. It is. You'll grab yourself a diamond sword and enchant that with sharpness four. Now that you're all kitted out with your fancy tools. You will definitely, at this point, you will definitely want to go to the nether, which, if you like building farms, you probably could have done a lot earlier. So, you'll build a nether portal just like this. Then you need some flint and steel to activate it and head into the nether. For a very valuable resource, quartz, which is used in for observers, which are used in a lot of redstone farms. Of course, you do need other materials like the eye, like like, like to get blaze rods and sign to be the ender dragon and stuff. But the, yeah, then you gotta go to the Nether and get go through the fortress to find the blaze rods and then and so forth so it may be difficult to find another fortress a lot of time it is difficult and yeah especially do not dig straight down in the nether that is the worst possible idea after you found a nether fortress, you really want to stay away from these weather skeletons as they give you the wither effect. What you're really here for right now is the blazes. These guys. When you want to find your spawner, usually you want to box it in and do all that stuff. But you want to hunt these guys down. To try and get blaze rods. Looting three does really help. As you see, I got the blaze rod there. You need quite a bit of these. Then after that, you need to hunt for some endermen. You don't have to do this in the nether, though they are very ender. There's a lot of endermen in warp four. But you do need to hunt Endermen so you can get these. You probably want to get at least 16 of these. And now it's time to head back to the overworld. After you've returned to the overworld, you want to throw one of your eyes under. Go ahead in a direction and hope it doesn't break. You want to head in that direction. It's usually around 2,000 blocks out. So you definitely want to head in that direction for a very long time. After a little bit, you want to throw another one. You can make sure you're heading in the right direction. Hope it doesn't break. 
collect it and continue on with your journey. Alright, I have found the village. I think every single time this stronghold is always under a village. So once you're in it, you can tell. The yeah, Ivander's gone underground in time. To find it. Now, you explore. You want to look in every single nook and cranny. You can get some good stuff. Usually not the best of stuff, but some stuff that may be of use. We want to try to find this portal. You also probably want to get a bow and enchant it, which I usually, which I forgot, but yeah, you definitely need to get a bow and enchant it. So, magic enchanting table, magic bow. That I totally didn't just pop out of thin air. And ideally, you would want to hide up and enchant on it. For now, I'm just going to set up with this. Since I'm not going to set up with the whole thing. These are libraries. They have tons of books, which is very useful. They have these chests, which you can have good books. The only thing is beware of curses. Curse of binding, if you put it on armor, you cannot take the armor off. Curse of vanishing is if you die with that item that that has the enchantment on it, it's gone. The item is gone. It just disappeared. See, it can have some really, really good books. So these are always worth checking out. After finding the stronghold, I mean the portal, you want to have Eyes of Ender on you. There are usually are eyes vendor already filled in here. Sometimes there's a stupid like one in a trillion chance that it's completely filled in, but I've never seen that. You open the portal. Usually break this. Set your spawn. Get some backup items ready. And then leap in. Now you dig out of your little thing. In some cases it's floating over the void in which case you should probably you bridge over. First thing you want to do is take out those crystals. Take out as many of them as you can. You really need to take out all of them, otherwise the boss will be very difficult to beat. Not impossible, but definitely it's easier if the crystals are gone. Some of these are too high to shoot, or they're in cages. In which case you want to have some blocks on you to build up. To them, these crystals. These crystals can kill you really easily. You want to be really careful with them. Break one of these, shoot in, so you don't take any damage, and head for the next one. Then you're building up to each tower, shooting arrows all over the place. Like a madman. If the dragon, if there's a beam from the dragon to the crystal, that means it is healing from the crystal. And if you attack the crystal with beaming to, it will indeed take damage. After you've destroyed every crystal, it's time to attack. You can indeed bring beds if you're trying to do this quickly, but I typically don't. You want to shoot at the 
dragon while it's not near you. If you hit the head, it does more damage. You can bring beds if you want. Which do massive damage. If you don't want to be dead still, just go in and swing at its head. That will also do damage. You should know when it's pushing the arrow, do not damage it. Only while it's flying. If you're on survival, it will spray thing, something called Dragon's Breath. It's basically a bunch of purple particles that you really don't want to go in. If you do, it will pretty much kill you. Dead, or pets go into the air, crumple up, and give you around 82 levels of experience. Then you have officially beat the Ender Dragon. Then you can go on to the, do the elytras and things. But I'm not going to dive into that in this video. So, that is going to be where I finish it off today. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, and watch my next video. But until next time, this is Coal Mine. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.